Hello again. Today I just have a short video. This is based on a question I've received from someone about an indicator that will raise an alert when the price has moved by a given amount. So the purpose of this indicator is that from the open price of each bar, if the price moves by a specified amount, up or down, then an alert will be raised and then the indicator waits until the next bar opens. Uh, I've modified that slightly so that it will raise the alert for both the up and the downside, but only once in each bar. It's not a very long indicator, but I hope that you'll find it useful and you can adapt it to your own purposes. So let's get straight into the code and have a look at this. This is the MetaTrader 4 editor open, but this code will work in both MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. So I'm in the indicators section here. I've already got a folder called Orchard. I'm going to keep my code in there. I'm just going to create another subfolder there called Price Movement Alert. And now I'll just start the indicator with the wizard. New file, custom indicator, So now I have the blank template. Let me just tidy this up a little bit. So now after using the wizard and I've tidied up the code and the comments a little bit, it's inserted the copyright link version, property strict for MetaTrader 4, you won't see that on MetaTrader 5, and indicator chart window. I'm not actually drawing an indicator, I'm not setting up any buffers and I'm not going to be creating any plots. So if you compile this with MetaTrader 5, you may get a warning message to say no plots are defined, but you can ignore that. Now because I want to measure a movement, I'm going to have an input that lets me define how far that movement's going to be. I'm going to input this movement in points rather than an actual price movement. And because this is in points, I'm going to need to convert that to a price movement. So I'm setting up a global scope variable I'm calling movement value and I'm going to store that 50 points or whatever you input in actual price size. And I'll do that here in the on init section. Convert points to a price value. Movement value equals. So the number of points multiplied by the size of a point. And I get the size of a point with this function symbol info double, passing in symbol bracket bracket, the current chart symbol. And the argument to that is symbol underscore point. And that gives me the size of one point if I multiply that by the number of points. That gives me the total movement value that I'm looking for. So then in the on calculate section, I'm going to create some static variables that I'm going to be using as this loops through so that I can detect changes. First is a date time that I'm calling current bar time. I'm going to use this to detect if a new bar has been created by comparing the current bar time to the time of the latest bar. And then these are the two target prices I'm looking for, the high target and the low target. And I'm initializing those to zero just here. And zero will tell me that these haven't been set, so I can ignore them later in the code if they are set to zero. Now, I'll be using the current bar time, comparing that to the actual time of the current bar number zero to determine if I've created a new bar and then I have to reset these targets. But if you just open up a chart and you don't have all of the data there, it's still downloading from the broker. It's possible for this function to be called multiple times as more bars are being created, which would cause the alert system to trigger multiple times. So I just want to get out of here if that's happening. Now each time this function is called, rates total tells me how many total bars I have available to calculate and prev calculated tells me how many of those bars I've already calculated. It's the value that I returned from this function last time. With this statement, I'm saying if rates total is not the same as prev calculated, then that means that I have more bars, I've got new bars being created. And if that's true, then I'm just going to return rates total, which will reset prev calculated for the next time it comes into this loop. And this is the way that I'm going to simply exit the loop if I'm still getting new bars loaded into the system. And so to get through to this next statement, 
rates total must be the same as prev calculated, which means that all the bars have been loaded and I can now carry on and do some calculations. So the first check, if current bar time is not equal to time zero. So time zero is passed into this function here and that stores an array of the opening times of all the bars and time zero is the opening bar time for bar zero. Now when a new bar is created first thing that will happen is that we'll come into this function and rates total will be one more than prev calculated so it will exit here but as soon as the next tick happens it will fall through that. And so if current bar time is not equal to time zero this is where I want to recalculate the targets based on the opening price for this bar. So I reset current bar time to be the same as time zero just to make sure that I don't keep doing this calculation. Uh, and so once that's happened the next time I come through this loop it will bypass this section. And then I calculate the high target which is the open price. Open is another array that's passed into this function here. So open zero is the open price for bar number zero and I'm not making any allowance here for a difference between bid and ask prices. I'm just taking the open price. If you want to allow for bid and ask on the high or the low targets, then you can make an adjustment here. But open zero plus movement value gives me the target upper price that I'm looking for the price to move past. And then I do exactly the same thing for the low target, but I'm using minus. So open minus low movement value gives me the low value that I'm looking for. And now the high target and low target have been set at the beginning of a bar. And I'm just looking now to see if the price has moved past those. So I'll test the high target first. If high target is greater than zero, so that means it's been set. Remember we set it to zero here as an initialization. So if it has been set and the close price, close zero, it's another one of these variables that's passed in. There it is, close. If the current close price, which while the bar is still open, close price is the current price, is greater than or equal to the high target price, then I know the price has moved past that or has at least reached that high target. And then I'm going to call this function that I'll write in a moment called alert me. And I'm passing the target price, the current price, close zero, high, just to say which direction I've gone through. And I'm also passing this time current minus time zero. It will just tell me how many seconds it's taken to reach that point. And once I've called that alert, I don't want to keep being alerted during the current bar, not until a new bar is created. So I'm just resetting high target back to zero. And that means next time it comes through, it will fail this test and will ignore the high target then until the next time we come in with a new current bar time. Now I'll do the same for the low target. Still testing low target being greater than zero, but in this case, if the close price or the current price is less than or equal to the low target, where for the high price was greater than or equal to. And then the call to the alert me function is the same, but now the low target, the close zero, which is the current price, and I'm passing low as an argument there, and same number of seconds calculated and then reset the low target to zero so that I also won't continually raise alerts on the low target. That's the finish of the function for onCalculate. So that takes care of everything except actually displaying the alert. So let's just write that alert me function now. So the alert me function taking the arguments of the target price that we were aiming at, the current price, the type and that will be high or low it's just a string and the number of seconds that we took to get to this point so I'm creating the message that I'm going to display in the alert using the string format so string format takes a template string this is the template string and it fills in these placeholders with the values that are passed in as the remaining arguments. So percent %f is a decimal value, percent %s is a string, 
there's another percent F and then that should be a percent sign and percent I is an integer so the message will say current price whatever the current price is has passed high or low target price of then the target price in a number of seconds and then the following section to that after this comma here I've wrapped it around to the next line to make it easier to see the arguments are current price type high or low target price and seconds so these are in the same order that these placeholders appear in that string and once I have that message formatted I just use the inbuilt alert function passing in that message and that will display a pop-up alert on screen and that should be everything let me just make sure that compiles so this warning message is because the time current minus time zero is going to be returning along but I'm only looking for an integer so it's it's just a warning message I can ignore that if you really want to remove that you can change this to long and the message goes away so now let's go to the chart and I'll load this indicator on and we'll wait to see one of those alerts pop up so I have a chart here it's running a one minute chart because I want to see things move fairly quickly there's the price movement alert indicator I'm going to bring that onto the chart and I'm going to change this because I don't want to wait too long I'm just going to make that two so I'm waiting for a two point movement and then we've got an alert the price 1.185 has passed the high target 1.1849 in 27 seconds so that's the complete code for an indicator that will tell you when the price has moved by more than a target amount during any single bar so I hope you found this useful. If you have, then please click the like button. And if you want to see more of our code, then remember to subscribe and click the bell icon. You'll be notified when we release new content. So until the next time, thank you for watching.